Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 27 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. This time we're doing version 2.1 of my flagship products, get online and get organized. This is the current version of my procedure for organizing a digital marketing strategy. And there are the six steps on the right. We're gonna go through each one beginning with research. The point of the research step for me is to flesh out a SWOT chart, and that's a chart of the strengths and weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for a specific brand. So here's an example of a very simple and research one, but the goal is to kind of give you some idea in your mind's eye, if you will, how it kind of plays out, right? And so strengths and weaknesses are internal to the brand, and then opportunities and threats are external to the brand. Here are some of the questions, some example questions. I mean, there's a lot more than that potentially, and there's other reports as well, but here's a sampling of some. And again, it all leading up to the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So the goal for this strategy for JasonOpsLLC.com is to really establish and lead the public conversation about how I organize a digital marketing strategy in the customer point of view local business owners specifically and then kind of the the sweet spot if you will are those local business owners who are unsettled and confused by digital so the pressing problem is there's a litany of options for digital marketing specifically just loads and loads and loads of possible tactics and it's impossible to decipher especially when you're coming in cold it's impossible to decipher initially where to start or whom to trust. So there's no real clarity on how all these disparate pieces fit together properly. And that's where a strategy comes in. So the digital foundation is the hub of everything for the digital marketing. And I begin with the website. I explain it to folks as the digital office. Look at it as the homepage is the front door to the business, to this brand, right? So they walk in that front door and you can have as many different departments, sections, etc. but it all builds out from that initial point of entry. So this is the homepage for Jason Ops LLC. And the idea is to make eye contact, if you will, and help people decide, do they wanna learn more or do they not? And so the idea being to tell my story, right? And my life's work, so to speak, is how I organize a digital marketing strategy. So that's what it's all built around, right? And as you scroll down, you see, you know, the kind of the short story, if you will, as far as about how I organize a digital marketing strategy. And then you, you start to see the, kind of the presentation of how step-by-step step, I approach each of the steps. And at the bottom, you see the actual, my call to action for my two flagship products, one being get online, which is the left one, the blue button, and then the white button is get organized. So I like to build out from the homepage. I use Essence Pro by Genesis. Uh, it's a Genesis child theme from studiopress.com. And <laughs> I just, I love the design and it makes it easy for me because the way that I taught myself to build websites for brands was from their homepage. And that means that with Essence Pro, I'm using a couple of widget areas on the homepage to populate the primary message on the homepage. And then I have the navigation menus, which I like to put top and bottom. And the pages that are on the navigation menus obviously have to be populated and you have a website, you're up and running. So the digital store is the shopping cart. And the goal is, you know, it's the store area, if you will, for the brand. When they walk in that front door, there's also going to be an area where they can buy stuff. And for me, these are the primary call to actions. There's obviously this one that shows up on every, and because I'm using Essence Pro, this uh widget area shows up on every page on the website. So it's it's the call to action on the home page 
the primary call to action. I'm about to show you the secondary one in a second, but it's the primary call to action on the home page as well as it's now on every other page on the site. So if they go see one of my examples or if they see something else or whatever, however they come into my online office, they're always going to see my two flagship products. And then this is the secondary call to action on the homepage. Already have a website, yes and no. Those likewise go to get online and get organized. So here's the top of the landing page for get online. And you'll see it, same thing. It's just starting to break the ice and see, do, am I something that they relate to? The true Jason, is that something that they find interesting and want more of? And then as they scroll down, so I wanted to make it as scannable as possible. And the way that I did it is I laid it out in three steps. The very first step is that you choose between six months and six weeks as the pace. And it's either going to be 500 bucks a month or it's going to be $2,500 to just secure what six week period your project will play out over within my schedule and obviously yours as well. And then you pay the 2500 to secure the time and then the second 2500 at the beginning of the fifth week the idea is i'm still a one person shop but even as i grow i'm growing the media stuff i'm not looking to grow a huge accounts receivable etc just it's not part of the business plan so once they do pay right so if they click either of those buttons it's going to take them directly to a checkout page where they can purchase the 500 or 2500 dollars version and then once they complete the successful purchase then they land on this page which is successful payment we begin month one and it's time to book your first video call with me both of them have the same basic message it's hey successful purchase and then here's the next step which we're going to set up a call as the goal i just i like to use those one-to-one -one interactions as signposts as we move through the project so that they're always they always feel on top of the the project with me that we're together we're a team and that's just really important perception wise when you know i'm managing their perception to whether or not they continue to work with me long term which is you know why i have clients that have been with me since 2010 2012. so the 2.3 the media archive you just want to store everything on the actual website so I, and i prefer whenever possible to have video audio and written for every episode of a show as far as the audience that's the third step and rather than renting indirect access to third party audiences where it's almost like a one night stand each time you're actually looking to marry an audience over a long term period by having that direct relationship between you and your audience and so the way that i plan for that is you have your media plan your creation process for that media and then your distribution plan as well so the biggest lesson I've learned so far over the past eight years of creating content, creating media as a one person media company is you know, I talk to one person each time and I'm not trying to be everything to everyone because that would mean I'd end up being nothing to everyone from my experience. So part of attracting your ideal person is also repelling the wrong person. And people improve through public experience and repetition. Biggest lesson that I've, I've learned, you have to put it out there and let the market see it and judge it basically in order to get the most benefit from it. And because for instance, with me, if you go to my YouTube channel, Facebook page, whatever, you're, or my website, you're gonna see there's a lot of media that I've released over the past 10, 12 years but it's probably 5% of what I actually created. And if I had have created, or if I had have released that other 95%, I believe I'd be far, much farther along. That's why these days I literally make and share every video every time. So deep breath, be yourself. It, the key to everything is don't try and be what you think they want you to be, just be yourself. And so in this instance, you know, 
I'm documenting the story of Jason Hobbs LLC with my two flagship products, which are get online and get organized, right? And I'm starting with the origin. And the second biggest key that I've learned is that you have to commit to and deliver a weekly list of media deliverables in order to consistently show up on each of the different third party websites, media, whatever you want to refer to them as, you want to be able to show up there consistently. And as always in business, in my view, it's always the smart play to focus on your customer. It, video, audio, and written version so that they get to choose which way they want to consume it each time. Consistent, committed action week in and week out so that they, if they um, trust it enough to where they enjoy it and they want more of that media, then you're going to continue to fulfill that contract, if you will. And so, once again, that's the focus on the customer. Now, the media plan for Jason Hobbs LLC is the audience point of view that I'm focusing on is local business owners and family business owners. And the strategy being, I'm explaining how I organize a digital marketing strategy specific to as many individual local business owner points of view as possible. And each one, I'm like I'm saying, I'm creating a video version in mind of translating that into both audio and written versions every time. And the show schedule is three examples per week, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. And I just, some days I've been a little bit late, holidays on a Monday, et cetera, I come in on a Tuesday to get it done. But the, the point is the three examples per week is what I'm trying to hold myself to. In the media creation process, so as a general rule, principle, whatever, you want to iterate your creation process. So the producer of the video, of the episode, of the message, of the story, whatever you want to quantify it as, that producer plans the video with a shot list. May have a team, may just be the producer by themselves. The shot list and B-roll are going to have to be recorded, and then you're going to have to edit the video, either the producer or an editor, or however you solve that problem. But someone has to edit the video to tell the desired story, publish the video to the brand website, distribute the video to the rest of the web, and then promote the video to get more and more eyes onto it. And to me, the key to success is that the process completion from the very first iteration, completing the process, outputs a single creative composition that is put in front of the market for the market to judge. So the example process, I plan each example in a slide deck. I record each example in Soapbox by Wistia, which is what I'm doing now. This is my slide deck that I'm referring to, and I'm using Soapbox by Wistia to record it. I edit each example in iMovie because I have the pro version of Soapbox by Wistia. That allows me to download an MP4 file, upload that, or, you know, drag that into uh, iMovie and then do whatever editing I need to or want to. And then I publish, distribute and promote each of the different examples that I'm doing of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. So the deliverables, you're going to have a list of them, but an example for what I'm doing is I'm forcing myself to do a video clip 60 seconds for Instagram, an audio ver version for anchor.fm, images with pull quotes, from the episode and then short stories where I'm just taking a series of say four images and then in each image has two or three sentences worth of a story and over the course of it you tell a quick story. All right so media distribution 3.3 the goal behind this is to give the people what they want where they want it how they want it and every time they want it which is just you know an outrageously high bar however it is the goal that I said. So the video Wistia when I'm embedding it on the brand website, so in this case on jasonobsllc.com, I'm always embedding using Wistia. Facebook brand page for Jason Hobbs LLC, I upload it natively. Same thing with YouTube channel as well as LinkedIn. And with LinkedIn, I created under 10 minute version of what's typically been a 25 to 35 minute version each week on average. The early ones were real short. Well, short, much shorter, but as 
the process or the procedure of what I was going through. No, as the format kind of took shape, if you will, after some repetition, it, it was right around the 30 minute mark became what I needed to shoot for as a goal rather than like six or eight minutes that I had started out with initially. For audio, I use anchor.fm and written in images go to the blog and everything goes through my blog these days. So the videos, audio, everything's going to go there. And then I'm going to put it in other places as far as the distribution but publishing it is on my place, my website. So the prospects, digital offer, they have to have an offer available in order for them to be a prospect. The customer attention life cycle is my approach to planning for an empowered consumer. And when that empowered consumer decides to pay attention to this brand and the digital offer, I use solution access value and education. I learned it from Greg Ciotti. They taught me the four P's of marketing at Valdosta State, where I got my marketing degree with honors on May 8th of 2010. And on May 8th of 2010, I went into my digital marketing lab here in Fitzgerald, Georgia, where my grandparents lived for 70 years. And I've lived for the past whew, 15 or so. And well, since 2015, so 14 years. But I walked in and I've been working on this procedure that I put together as far as how I organize a digital marketing strategy since that day. And part of the evolution, so to speak, was when I was able to actually detach from the four P's completely and go directly to the solution access value and education because it's much more native to an empowered consumer and to digital version, which we all use our smartphones in just crazy amounts. Like I don't have mine right in front of me and it's a conscious decision that I had to make so that I wasn't checking it and being distracted by it. I had to put it on the airplane mode and charge it on in the other room. So yeah, that's a big change that's happened recently. So the solution access value education, the solution in this instance are my two flagship products that I've literally been iterating since the start, which are get online and get organized. And we started, the very first product was always get online. Get organized came about in the last seven years. Now, the access, that's through my website. And it's, I just wanted to make it clear, it's get-online, get-organized. And the value, so they walk away with a website that they own, WordPress, Genesis Framework, and on liquidweb.com managed WooCommerce hosting. They walk away with that website, put together and up and running. And I have loads of demos for them to look at. So same thing with the online store. They walk away with a working online store that's connected to their business bank account. They walk away with a documented digital marketing strategy. They walk away from my personal service. So the idea behind the personal service is to make sure that they understand everything as they're going along. It's never just, hey, you pay this, you get this, go on. It's always been a step-by-step -step personal service. And that's just what I would have done for my grandfathers. And they were the ones that I was designing Get Online initially for and that Get Organized sprung from as well. So, you know, our interactions are always on your time as much as humanly possible. And then the other part is just no one else is really talking about long-term thinking as much or at all when it comes to marketing and a local business or family business, just a small business from smaller areas. So at project completion, like I was saying, they walk away with the digital marketing strategy. The website is live. The online store is actively serving customers and has been tested and your documented digital marketing strategy is in your hand. So the education, this is kind of my philosophy, if you will, for the communication, all the messaging that's going to come about for these two products, get online and get organized. And that's how I organize a digital marketing strategy. Everything, all the different litany of different marketing tactics are all controlled by the strategy. So yeah, we'll get into email marketing. Yeah, we'll talk about live chat. We'll talk about conversational marketing and ABM. There's any number of possibilities depending on your unique context and your specific goal. So the customer attention lifecycle for my flagship products 
is currently stranger to where they don't know me, I don't know them. And then once they identify themselves as a local business owner or a local entrepreneur or a family business owner or an area small business owner, however they personally you know, explain it to other people, then they've identified themselves as a potential audience member of mine and they're going to make the decision if they join my audience or not right so but the ones that do make the decision i'm going to cater to them and then from there those that decide i'm going to qualify them and they're likewise qualify me you know does it make sense do i trust them just whatever questions that you might have I want to answer all of them. And at the same time, I want to verify that you're someone that is a qualified prospect for me, because if you view business as a zero sum game, then we're not <laughs> compatible, but I still, you know, avail yourself of all the free stuff. And I may even over time build a network that I can refer you to, but just for me, I don't view business as a zero sum game. I never have. It's a non zero sum game in my mind. Once I've qualified them as a prospect, they're qualified for these two flagship products as they don't have a website or they don't have a documented strategy. Those are the two qualifiers, so to speak. Yeah, they gotta be a local business owner, but beyond that, they don't. They have to not have a website or they have to not have a documented strategy. And in that case, if they don't have the documented strategy, what I'm finding is that they typically feel completely out of control of the digital marketing. And that's why they kind of push it to the side and try to deal with it later. <laughs> so the four is purchase a six month or six week project, which is to get online or get organized. They're both going to go at whatever, either cho your choice of pace, right? And then the customers, the way that I plan for the customers is the customer conversation and the customer feedback loop. We've already addressed the customer attention life cycle previously. So here we're saying, we just wanna make sure that we have open lines of communication with them and we have a way to monitor digital reputation as well, which is the customer feedback loop. So 5.1 is the customer conversation. The goal of it is to have a two-way convert or you're having a two-way conversation between the brand and the customer. And you want both the brand and the customer to be treated as equal, mutually respected parties that way both sides listen to the other side and take into account the other side's feelings is the goal so the goal of it is to relate to people to be helpful and then segment those customer point of views which really in this instance it, it's segmenting but that's and that sounds kind of harsh but really what it is is or the way that i see it is that you're just listening to people you're actually remembering what they say by segmenting them and let them change it. I mean, if it changes, you know, all you're going to want to do is update it. It's not like you're going to know you, you, you know, you declared it six years ago. So the qualified prospects, that's the goal of the conversation as a brand. Let's face it. It's a for-profit entity and the goal of qualifying them in remembering what they've said and having them relate to you and being helpful so that they're, there's almost a contract, so to speak, in their mind, because you bid helpful is it's all to make contextual offers so that you're not trying to talk anyone into anything. You're just giving people the context to purchase something that they actually want to buy. Now, the customer conversation is live chat, email, phone and video meetings. So the I am pulling all of that together through drift.com which is actually how I'm scheduling the video meetings, which I'm using Zoom for those. And then you know, the phone and email and live chat are all, well, the email and live chat are actually within Drift as well as the video meetings scheduling component. And the point is that I'm remembering, so to speak, for each of these different customers and over, t over time, right? So the customer feedback loop, I do, it using gatherup.com and it used to be get five stars back in the day, but they changed the brand a few years back to gatherup.com. And what happens is they email what's called an NPS question and it's a one to 10 scale net promoter score is what the NPS stands for. How likely are you to share this brand? 
one to eight replies are put into what I refer to as a customer service queue and nines and 10 replies are thanked and invited to share their thoughts publicly as well. And they're given shortcut buttons to different profiles where they can just click it and go and just you know, type in whatever they want to type in about that brand. So the campaigns are the sixth step. I have typically three categories of campaigns, get attention, keep attention, and administrative. And I'll walk you through an example of each. So for getting attention, this typically occurs off the website, right? So this is on, and it, some can be paid, some can be free, whatever. There's going to be different stuff. And even if you don't pay for something out of pocket cash or whatever, you're still typically going to be paying something, right? So the get attention example is breaking the ice. So for get online and get organized, here is the, the icebreaker questions, if you will, that the messaging is going to convey in the paid stuff that I end up doing that's specifically attention based. Probably start with some just real small budget Facebook ads to start testing it and then kind of take it from there. So how's your digital marketing strategy? And the second question is, does your business have a website yet? And I'm sure that those will iterate more over time, but those are the two primary ones that I'm starting with as I move forward. And I'm going to come back and update in the future where I'm sharing what happened, you know, what the actual results were with tracking. I have databox.com. I use them for and have data boards that I can share with, you know, for each of the different campaigns as well. And so and, you know, it's my stuff, so I'm able to actually share it without having to ask anybody, which is pretty cool. So the keep attention is an example is the two way conversation. And so the way it works is and that's in the bottom right. That's an example in under promise over deliver is always my goal. So I'm promising two examples per week, but I'm planning and trying to every week force myself to do three. And I'm not perfect. I don't make it every time, but I, mo more often than not now, I'm being able to get out three every week at the end of the Friday, you know, <laughs> by the end of it, they are three out. <laughs> they may have all finished going out on Friday, but hey, three went out. And so the point of it, though, is that this email list, I will be emailing them once every single solitary week, and it's not going to be a bunch of links and so forth. It, I'm treating it as a two-way conversation. So I want them to hit reply and, you know, share whatever, but, and to kind of stimulate that, I'm treating it as a direct, like if we were on the phone one-to-one -one talking through and I was just updating them on my view on how I organize a digital marketing strategy. And because this is something I'm obsessively thinking about 24 seven. So I can kind of let, I'm letting them in to benefit from all of my obsession and experience over the years and apply it to their, take some of the lessons and that are applicable in it apply it on their own to their business stuff, you know, for whatever brands or nonprofits or whatever. So the administrative example is local citations. And with most of the businesses, not with mine currently, like I don't have a retail version yet, but I am planning to. My goal is as soon as possible, but my goal that I've set is by the end of 2020 to have a retail space in Fitzgerald that's open 40 hours a week for people that, and we'll get into more of that in the future. But at that point, local citations will be important for other places already important though. So I just like to mention at each sign, which is the look, they have what they call a local citation building service. This is brightlocal.com. And it's a data aggregator submissions as well. And what it allows you to do as the local business owner or the marketing person or the media person for that local business is you're able to upload the name, address, and phone number, what's the correct setup, spelling, et cetera, and punctuation and all. And then you're also able to upload you know, links and videos and images and galleries of images and a short description and a long description etc and then bright local and their team they go out to the different places and they they use a scraper to let you know hey here's where you have problems here's where you're good at and here's where you're not even on so we can help you 
you know, show up there because it's relevant to your industry. So very helpful stuff. And they, they go back and check in over time. They have a full you know, task list or checklist or whatever that they work through. And so, yeah, I just, I consistently and heavily and heartily recommend it. So the DIY investment. So I like to show how I put the pieces together. And I'm still getting better at make, remembering all the pieces and making sure that they're specific to each of the different examples because I'm making myself do three of these on top of everything else. And, uh, and, the, and this one was on mine where I was actually updating it and then doing the episode or the example for it. And yeah, so 39 bucks a month for liquidweb.com. Man, that's what I'm using for jstopsllc.com. Manage WooCommerce hosting by LiquidWeb. Their main plan starts at 250 a month. And really what I'm my goal is set for is in 2019 be able to afford and need to afford the 750 bucks a month just because I really there's $750 a month plan at liquidweb.com for their managed WooCommerce hosting because of I have some idea of the access to their team that that affords you for those people on the 750 a month plan. And I really want to avail myself of it and start having clients be able to avail themselves of it as well later. And I just, I really believe that's going to be super powerful for making sure that everyone is able to eventually start from a very optimized version of this managed WooCommerce hosting setup in a very short period of time, hopefully. So studiopress.com, 130 bucks if you've never bought anything from them before for the Essence Pro theme. And 15 bucks a year for my domain name. That's why I put it because I know what it is. Typically, it's under 100. If you need to go, it just depends. If you're going to, if you have a vanity big name that you need and somebody's been squatting on or whatever, then it could be expensive. But for most of the time, I mean, it's not going to be like somebody's been squatting on your name. Most of the time, I mean, knock on wood, I guess. Wistia.com for the video hosting and analytics is 100 bucks a month. And then it's like after a certain number of videos that you upload, you're going to start paying an extra 25 cents per video per month over, you know, your allotted like 10 or whatever videos. So it's not cheap at all. But when you're your own media company, <laughs> the video hosting and analytics, you just, it's well worth it. Um, so the 50 bucks a month for drift.com, which is the live chat and email. It's also the timeline that I'm actually putting everything onto as the primary timeline, so to speak, for people. And gatherup.com, the customer feedback loop, the premium SEO plugin by Yoast.com. There may be some other plugins from them that you will want to buy but the 89 bucks a year for their flagship premium seo plugin is i mean super well worth it and then 300 bucks a year for wistia.com because i do use soapbox every time it's a chrome extension that enables anyone to record edit share and measure presentation videos so i'm doing a presentation video of a slide deck that i built in google slides so which is part of and five bucks an employee per month for G Suite, which is by Google. And it's the G Suite email docs and all that stuff. So if you have questions, email me, feel free to text me. If you wanna call, you can leave a message. If I don't know your number, I'm not gonna answer, but I do eventually check messages and return them as soon as I can. So what is next is example 28 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. And that'll be available on Wednesday, which is tomorrow, January 23rd of 2019. Hopefully January is going really well for you. And if you have questions, hit me up.